Have you ever noticed that the longer your conversation with AI gets, the worse it becomes? It seems like all of the sudden the intelligence just drops off a cliff. That's because it literally does. Thankfully, Notebook LM just got a backend update that helps solve this problem, along with a few other features that I'm excited to show you today. Hi, my name is Callum, also known as Waterloots, and welcome to today's video on the hidden updates to Notebook LM how the back end has improved the quality of your chats and your insight generation. In today's video, I'm going to walk through all of the latest updates to Notebook LM, along with explanations on why these updates matter. My goal for today is to help you learn how to use any AI better through the concept of context engineering or context management and how you can avoid context rot to improve the quality of your AI interactions. I also share tips and practical workflows on how to get the most out of Notebook LM, including their new features. If you find today's video helpful, please consider liking, hyping, and subscribing, as I am working on making YouTube my full-time career, so any support you can give me is very much appreciated. Now let's take a look at the hidden updates to Notebook LM. It's actually kind of a hidden update, so you might not have noticed it. This is what's called a backend update, where Notebook LM has improved its processing to help generate greater insights and clearer answers. There's a significant update in the contextual understanding, which is going to improve the conversation ability of Notebook LM. But rather than just walking through the blog post that shows you to these features, I thought I would show you not only what the updates are that you may have missed, but also explain the context behind this update so you have a better understanding of how Notebook LM is working with your sources. Just very briefly, if you've never used Notebook LM before, it's a research partner that allows you to upload your own sources, and then you can chat with those sources. You can upload PDFs, websites, YouTube videos, Google Docs, there's a lot you can do. And then you can actually chat and generate insights with them. You can produce audio overviews, which are like AI-generated podcasts to help you have an audio version of your resources. And you can also generate video overviews, which I'll show you a little more. But my favorite part about Notebook LM is that they value your privacy and they don't use your data to train Notebook LM. The first time you sign into Notebook LM, you're gonna get a pop-up that explains this a little bit more. And basically what it says is that by default, they're not using your data, including your source uploads, queries, and responses for training their model. However, you do have to check out the terms and conditions to make sure you're comfortable with it. And if you provide feedback, like you upvote or downvote particular responses, then you might be sending that data to Notebook LM for processing. So just keep that in mind as you're going through that you might not want to provide feedback if you want to keep everything private. But now let's dive into the updates. The first update here has to do with Notebook LM's increased context window. So basically what they've done here is they've increased their context window by eight times. So what is a context window? Well, to help explain that, I figure let's use Notebook LM to research this and generate a report so that I can give you some more specific explanations. So I just clicked on discover sources. I'm putting in context engineering, context windows, and context rot. Click submit. So this generates a few sources, which we can then go through and decide if we want to add them or not. Click import, and they will appear on our sources tab on the side. And once they have been processed, I'll be able to chat with them in this section here. If it's a red source, like you can see on the side here, this means that that website has blocked AI scraping. You can go get the PDF version of it if you want to, or you can just remove it. Now that we have these sources on the side here, we can start working with them. We can go and we can, for example, generate an audio overview, which will create an AI podcast explaining all the sources here so that you can download this or go to the Notebook LM mobile app and then listen to the audio overview as you're walking around. We can generate a mind map of all the sources that we just had here that will extract all of the concepts and then put them together in a visual layout for you. We can also go and we can generate reports. So if we click on this, it will give some suggestions on default ones that we might want to create, and then it will load custom ones based on the particular information here. So for example, this one is a concept explainer that is explaining the essential difference between prompt engineering and content context engineering. So this can be really helpful for getting an at-a-glance overview on what we're dealing with here. We can also generate flashcards, quizzes, and video overviews that I will show you in a little bit. For example, here is the mind map that was generated where we can go in and see context engineering for LLM applications, which is the major backend update that Notebook LM is talking about when they say they've got this eight time larger context window. And the key element here is that we're dealing with context window limitations and constraints, specifically something called context rot that's become more popular in recent months since this study came out on context rot by Chroma. So I'll get into that in just a moment. I just wanted to show you how we can start breaking these concepts up and going into specific elements of our research. And if we want to add more sources here, we can always click add. 
We can connect to Google Drive. We can bring in more websites, YouTube videos, copy and paste text. We can add PDFs, text, markdown, and audio. So there's really a lot that you can do here that enables you to chat with your own sources. And none of these sources are used for training the AI models as long as you don't, for example, provide feedback. And I just want to quickly note that if you're interested in diving deeper into the Discover Sources, the mind map feature, or any of the other elements of Notebook LM, I do have a full YouTube playlist that goes more in depth that a lot of people have been finding really helpful. So I recommend checking out this series if you have questions about any of the specific features. As today, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly just to emphasize the updates that we've seen. So if I want to go have a chat with this, I can say, for example, what is a context window? And Notebook LM will now go through and use all the sources here to synthesize an output to give us an explanation. Oh, so this is perfect. I was actually going to use this exact phrase, working memory or short-term memory, to help explain what a context window is. A context window is how much context, how much text, a model can process and consider with a single request. This query right here, what is a context window, this prompt, that is a single request. There's a ton of information in all of these sources here, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of words across all of these sources. So Notebook LM can't keep all of this information in its short-term working memory in one go. It has to go and cherry pick and pull the most relevant information possible and then synthesize that information into its output here. We can kind of see how this works here in the Google blog update where we have the original query. That's the prompt that we put in. And then Notebook LM goes through and retrieves a whole bunch of specific excerpts from all the sources and then ranks them based on their similarity and then synthesizes them all together into a single output. So this is called RAG. Retrieval Augmented Generation. The context window is a super important element of RAG because, for example, if we take a look at this graph from Chroma, we can see that as the token input length increases, the performance significantly decreases. So for example, here's a 100 token context window, here's a 1,000, and here's 10,000. So as you continue to add more sources and add more questions and your chat length increased, you might have noticed the quality of your chat decreasing the longer your conversation got. So there's a balance here. There's a sweet spot where you want to put enough context that the model can understand what it is you're asking and provide you with the best answer. Not too little that it doesn't know what the answer should be and not too much that you start getting into context rot where the quality really starts to drop off. This quality drop-off, what's the threshold that you can hit where it starts to be too much, is determined by the context window. So for example, previously in Notebook LM, they only had 125,000 token context window, and now they have eight times more. We're up to a million. That effectively means you're able to have a six times longer conversation memory without losing quality as you go through and have this conversation. That's why it's kind of a hidden update here because this is happening behind the scenes, but it leads to you being able to use this tool even better. So not only does this context window increase improve your ability to have longer conversations, but it also improves the ability to generate deeper insights because it's able to hold more context in its working memory at one time. For example, maybe when it went through and retrieved certain pieces of information from various sources, it could only hold 10 paragraphs in memory at a time. Now it can hold 80 paragraphs in memory at a time, rank them all, grab the best ones, and then synthesize the top 10 into your answer. That just kind of shows you how it's able to broaden its initial search, find even more relevant information based on its larger context, its larger working memory, and then generate better insights based on pulling that information in and synthesizing it into that output. Google notes that this is important for very large notebooks where you have to be more careful about how you're context engineering to maintain the high quality and trustworthy answers. Because as we start to get into this context rot zone over here, we start getting into a lot more hallucinations by the AI where you stop being able to trust its output. And of course, it's a large language model, so you always have to verify the information. But if you can keep within the sweet zone, the Goldilocks zone of the context window, you're going to get more trustworthy information. So I hope that helps you understand how this backend upgrade makes Notebook LM that much more powerful and consistent with outputs, allowing you to have longer conversations, have longer sources, and a just generally improved insights. But now I wanna show you the next update to Notebook LM. And that's where if we go up to the top corner here, we now have this option to configure notebook. Just a quick reminder to please like and subscribe as your support helps me more than you know. Also, I know that I'm touching on a lot of technical concepts today, so please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there's anything you would like me to make a dedicated video on to explain these concepts further. Now let's keep exploring Notebook LM. So some people have had this for a little while, but it was rolling out and now it should be available to everyone. And basically the goal of this is to set your goals. When you're dealing with prompt engineering, the way that you prompt particular questions 
to Notebook LM and to other LLMs, a big element of prompt engineering is to explain the role that you want the LLM to operate in. There's a default one here, there's a learning guide here, but there's also this custom option. There's a few different ways that you can use this custom goal style or role. So for example, I could say respond at a PhD student level, or if it's something that I'm not familiar with, for example, if you're new to context engineering, you could say explain this as if I'm in high school or explain this as if I'm 10. You can choose the specific level that you want Notebook LM to operate at. You can also suggest different roles. I could say, pretend you are a marketing expert, pretend you are an engineer, pretend you are whatever the role is that you wanna learn from or that you wanna engage with. Maybe you are building your business and you want to develop a business strategy. You can tell Notebook LM to operate as a business specialist or a financial planner. You can choose the specific role that you want Notebook LM to operate in. You can also define overarching goals where you could say, I'm preparing for an exam or I'm preparing for this meeting or this pitch or this launch. I want you to help me do X. You can define that overarching goal at the outset inside of this configure chat option so that the entire conversation that you have is going to be focused on that specific element. Now, I'm not 100% sure how Notebook LM is personalizing your chat with goals, but my understanding is it's probably something called prompt injection, which is basically every time you ask a question and you go back and forth with Notebook LM, it's going to include this almost system level instruction, this prompt that it's going to inject into every one of your prompts so that it always keeps in mind, oh, hey, right, I'm operating at a PhD level or a high school level or as a marketing specialist. So that's just an easy way for you to target and focus the specific style you're looking for. So why don't I show you a quick example? Let's drop it down to a 10 year old level. I'm gonna put in the exact same prompt, what is a context window, and see how the answer changes. Oh, that's a super important question. So you can see it's using math problem analogies, explaining it like a robot brain rather than trying to get into AI right off the bat. It's like having a very long book. It's using words and examples that probably relate more to a younger person. This concept might not be the best example for that because I can't really imagine many 10 year olds are learning about context windows, but I hope you get the idea that you're able to customize what it is you're looking for. And you can do this for each chat. So I could now save this to a note. It would generate the note for the 10 year old example. And now I could go in and explain it to me like I'm a PhD student. And you'd be able to customize this, get a different answer and then save it here. And you can always convert it into a source if you wanna add that explanation into the side here. And again, I don't wanna to dive too deep into that because I do have a whole playlist that goes through how to use Notebook LM more in depth. I just wanna focus more on today's updates. Now, the next major update is still rolling out and that's the ability to save secure conversations. To help you with long-term projects, your conversations are now going to be automatically saved. You can close a session and resume it later without losing your conversation history. So I believe at the moment, I don't quite have this. Let's see if I go back to the home screen. Yeah, we can see that I just lost the chat history there. So this is still being rolled out, but in the future, your chat history is going to remain there. That's a really great combination with this eight times larger context window and six times longer conversation memory, because that conversation can continue to grow over multiple sessions, increasing the quality. You can just keep working working with that same conversation over time and then delete it at any point if you want to. The nice part too is it's only visible to you. So this means that it's not going into Notebook LM's training data as I mentioned at the beginning. Okay, and now the final update that I've noticed so far is actually related to the video overview. So this one came out a few weeks ago when Nano Banana by Google came out. So it should be rolled out to everyone right now, but the gist is that you're able to now customize the video overview in new ways. So for example, if we go back here and I click on the video overview button, we get the option to choose between an explainer and a brief. That I believe was there before, but now we have the option to bring in visual styles. So before you might've seen these classic ones, which I probably have an example here for you. So this is the standard style that I wasn't able to change before, the classic version, but now I can choose a whiteboard, I can choose a kawaii, anime, watercolor, retro print, heritage, paper craft, and I can actually auto select based on the particular video that I'm trying to generate. So to show you what this looks like, I actually just generated one for this video that you have already seen earlier. Rather than just showing you some of the slides like I did earlier, let's actually watch it for a minute. Today, we are cracking open the brain of an AI. We're gonna look at why these incredibly smart systems sometimes just fall apart, and more importantly, how the experts are learning to fix them. I mean, you've probably seen this, right? You're having a great conversation with a chatbot, and then suddenly it gets weird or slow, 
or just plain wrong. And that was using the paper craft style. So it's kind of cool that you're now able to customize and change it a little bit depending on what it is you're trying to say. And of course, there's always an option to customize the specific focus of the video overview. So you could use it for a presentation, you could use it to help you study for something. There's a lot that you can do here. And you can also, of course, generate flashcards, quizzes, reports, and the audio overview, which can be customized in similar ways. So again, I've got videos that go deeper into each of these features in my Notebook LM playlist, and I recommend checking it out if you're interested in learning how to use all of these features more in depth. And there you have it, the backend update to Notebook LM. It's something that you may not have noticed upfront, but now that you're aware of it, you'll start to see how it has improved the context, the quality, and the customization of your chats with Notebook LM. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate your support. If you are looking for more ways to support me, please also consider joining my membership as that enables me to continue making these videos. So thank you very much. Also, if you wanna learn more about Notebook LM or the different AI tools I use, I recommend checking out my AI learning playlist or my Notebook LM playlist as a lot of people have been finding it very helpful. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.